This is how head tracking should look. But if yours looks anything like this, then here's how to properly do it so you'll never get these freaky glitches again. First of all, our clip choice is going to be really important. You want to make sure that you at least have full HD clips because if you use a very grainy clip, it's not impossible, but it will be way harder to track properly. Once we got our clip inside of our After Effects, you can see I aligned it so that the character is perfectly in the center of my screen. But the problem is because he moves, once I get to the end of my clip, he's already being kind of cut off. So the head tracker will automatically put the face of our character always in the center of the screen. The first step is going to be going to window and then from here selecting tracker. As you can see on the right side of the screen that will bring up our tracker panel and now it's very important that you select the clip that you want to actually track. I also recommend finding a starting point where the character is actually very visible and where there's not too much motion blur because if you try to do it here you can see it kind of gets blurred which is why I'm going to start right here and then I'm going to click on stabilize motion. What that will do is bring us in this extra window where when we zoom out you can see the entire clip and in the middle we have two squares called track point number one. This is the most important important part because this track point will decide what part of our clip is going to be in the center of our screen. And because in our case that's obviously supposed to be the character's head, we're going to start by making the outer square just a bit bigger and then the same thing we're going to do for the middle square as well. If you keep these squares too small it's going to be very inaccurate so make sure they're roughly this size. Next up we want to find a point in our character's face that is not moving. I typically like to go for the character's nose because the problem if you use the eyes or mouth is if he starts speaking or blinking it will mess up your tracker. In my case the nose also has a pretty good contrast so I'm just going to take my track point and drag it onto my character's nose. This small plus sign in the middle of our tracker should be exactly on the point that you want to track. And now very important where a lot of people mess up is changing the options. We want to open these up and then at the very bottom instead of selecting adapt feature we want to select stop tracking and then put the confidence from 80 to 90 percent. Press on to ok and what that will do is once our tracker hits underneath of 90 percent confidence that the next point is accurate it will stop tracking instead of trying to find it and then completely messing up. Once that's done we want to go to the analyze section and click on analyze forward. This will now automatically start previewing every frame and you want to make sure this actually stays on the character's nose. If at any point the tracker stops, that's because it was unsure about the next point. So we just gotta go back and click on analyze forward one more time. This process might take a while depending on how good your PC and how long your clip is. Once that's done, we also want to track the beginning of our clip because as you remember, we started midway through since the beginning was a bit blurred. And to do that, we're now gonna press U on our keyboard, which as you can see, will bring up all of these keyframes. These are just responsible for our track point. And you want to go to the very first set of keyframes. This is where we started our tracker and from here on instead of clicking on analyze forward we want to select analyze backward which will just go in the opposite direction and the process is the same as before. Now that our entire clip is tracked we just want to make sure to hover over it to see if there's any anomalies which as you can see for me right here it goes off course. That means the tracker messed up which can happen sometimes and all we gotta do is just drag this back into the center on the nose where we want it to be. Once we check that all of the track points match up we can head back to our tracker panel and click apply. Now in here you will get multiple options. You can either select X only which will only move the clip horizontally. You can select Y only which will only move it vertically or you can select both which will make sure that the clip is stabilized in both directions whether it's moving upwards or sideways. In 99% of the cases I recommend you go with X only because then you won't get any motion tile issues on the top of your clip. Once that's done, press on to OK. And when using tracker on clips directly, you want to make sure you also go to the bottom and click this box twice to enable frame blending. Finally, the last and most important step is going to be adding a good color correction because as you can see, it will make your edits look amazing. And if you don't want to get my exact color correction I use to make my edits look the best as possible, make sure you check the first link in the description because I'm still running a huge sale in my shop. You can still get my presets, texts and project files for up to 70% cheaper. So if you want to upgrade your edits with just one click, make sure you check the link in the description and don't miss out. With that being said, if this video helped you, make sure you like and subscribe, it would really make my day. Watch this video next if you want to learn how to make your own TikTok edit. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.